Welcome to Joa Fitness Health Wellness Video Podcast, a space to ignite your day through positive conversations. We bring people that have created excellence in their life, sharing high vibration in their reawakening path. Productivity is not about being on and focused 24-7 and always being able to give 110% because I think that standard for me really burnt me a lot and it took me out of this really nice flow where I was just honoring my energy and working with my energy. Hello, hello, happy Monday, everybody. It's so exciting today to start the new week with an amazing guest speaker here that we have from the other part of the world. We are connecting globally with amazing female leaders, as you know, Back Into Alignment is a podcast dedicated for health and wellness. Back Into Alignment started as a, as a way for me to express my desire to, um, to learn the discoveries about uh, spinal health. I spoke with over 20, 40, like so many, I don't even know how many doctors I spoke about the spinal health. And then that helped me so much to discover my own issues that I had with my scoliosis. As I continue with my journey, I came back into alignment. I realized that a part of my journey is to connect to female leaders because it's very inspiring to see what people are doing in their communities. So today we are so delightful to have Erica uh, the Pellegrin. She is in Dubai and she's actually a lawyer originally from Australia and she is definitely an adventurer. This type of spirit definitely fits with our podcast back into alignment. It requires of bravery, it requires of courage and we are here to share these stories that may shape your own story to be able to uh, jump into the new um, arenas if you're actually thinking about doing some new uh, goals this year. So today we're going to be speaking about productivity. It's very important for us to dedicate time with quality. And Erika de Pellegrin is an expert on this. So thank you, Erika, again for coming today, Monday, with this uh, lunar eclipse and the full moon and so much energy on this day. Please tell us how are you there? Uh, thank you so so much, firstly, for thinking of me and for inviting me on. It's a really it's a pleasure to be here and chat with you today about something I'm very passionate about. Um, I always know there's something going on in astrology and in the cosmos when you know when your sleep's a bit funny. You actually can. I mean, I I don't know that much about astrology, but I genuinely feel like when there's something going on, you can feel it. Um, so it's I'm good. I'm good on this part of the world. It's actually cloudy here, which, as you would know, it's very rare for Dubai but um, it's warming up and can't complain. All good on this side of the world. Yes, it's uh, the practice of Ramadan, which is a very introspective time for uh, a lot of uh, population in the world. It's a time for reflection and a time to to reconnect to our inner world. So I'm, I'm sure like this energy is, is being felt in the, in the land of the UAE. And Erica, tell me a little bit about you, since you are also a nomad like myself. I have uh, actually, uh, as you hear my accent, uh, I'm from Venezuela and I have traveled the world for like over 30 countries. Um, I live in five countries, including Australia. I actually live in Sydney in one of my Beautiful. adventures. And I had a great time in Manly Beach and I actually took a sabbatical year in Sydney. Tell me a little bit about you. You are from Sydney, right? Yeah, that's right. So grew up in Sydney. I lived there my whole life. Um, and it was only actually during the pandemic that I think, you know, that that time was interesting for a lot of people. It was a very introspective time. And I was the kind of person like you, I kind of had have a bit of a spirit about me. My mom, when she was 18, she moved countries. And in the back of my head, it was always something I wanted to do. But my fiance, uh, at the time, he had a chiropractic clinic in Sydney. So he had this brick, bricks and mortar style business. So I thought, we're never going to live overseas because he's got a you know physical job here. For me, I could probably find work everywhere else. But for him, I thought, you know, maybe it's not going to work out that way. But COVID changed a lot for us. I think being in Australia, we were so isolated from the rest of the world. And he had these other interests. And, you know, one thing led to another. He came home one day and he said, do you want to move to Dubai? I had never been here. I knew one person that lived here and I just said yes. And in three months we packed up everything and, and we and we moved overseas. So I was very fortunate that I had my career as a lawyer behind me. I was able to 
you know, find work here. It's, it's, uh, I'm very grateful that it's, it's a job that, you know, is kind of international in that respect. I mean, commercial law, so it's, it's needed across the world. And I also have this podcast, which for me, it satisfies a part of my personality, part of my interest that I don't get to do in law, which is to connect with people on a very deep level, to talk about things that are in the wellness space, the self-development space that I'm really passionate about that, again, I don't get out of my nine to five, let's call it. So that's a little bit about me and what occupies my time. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, it requires a, a heart of uh, courage to 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 stop doing the familiar things and create a new uh, landscape that can actually uh, make you explore new new ways. And we never know the results unless we actually um, initiate the transformation. And as you travel to Dubai, I am sure that you notice that people are in this moment very distracted with so many things happening in the world, especially for mothers. A lot of the, the podcast uh, listeners are actually mothers. And uh, this podcast at the end is a conversation for you that are listening, perhaps you're cooking or you're driving. And this type of conversation can also align to your path and back into alignment is always a call for us to come back into our true purpose. Um, I do have a nonprofit of um, that I support for over seven years uh, from Venezuela. It's about education and medical resources for 1500 kids that touch my heart because I used to live in this community myself. Uh, so as I, I, I want to be at, at service of the community, it's so hard for us with all the distractions, especially having the the computer in our hands basically our our phones are basically a very distraction for our for our actions and uh, what type of metric do you feel like are the most efficient for for us um since uh, we are uh, starting a new uh, era that we do have as you are a lawyer uh working with web3 and ai uh, how can we integrate this without procrastination of our actually what matters for us. So can you please tell us a little bit about productivity and how we're shifting productivity this uh, time of the of life with uh, all these distractions coming into our world? Yeah, it, it's a tough one. And, you know, you, you introduced me as someone who, you know, is an expert in this, but I do want to say that doesn't mean I don't have days where I'm not productive and I don't have moments where I fall out of it. So I think that's completely normal. I think especially as women as we go through the cycle of a month, we have very different energy and hormone levels. And, and sometimes you need to find a way to flow with that. So I think the first thing I just wanted to say is like productivity is not about being on and focused 24 seven and always being able to give 110% because I think that standard for me really burnt me a lot. And it took me out of this really nice flow where I was just honoring my energy and working with my energy. The second thing I'll say, I think if you, you know, you have, a lot of distractions, like you very rightly pointed out, the phone is a big one, social media, we can spend a lot of time on these things, and it takes away from other things that we want to be doing. And so before we even start talking about how we're measuring productivity, we kind of need to get a bit of clarity on, well, what does a productive life mean to us, because it's going to look very different for different people. You said there's a lot of mothers listening to the show. So for them being productive, might mean a very different thing to somebody else listening to the show who, uh, you know, maybe has a, a business or a career, or maybe somebody else listening is doing both. So I think it's really important to understand well, what actually matters to you. Because to me, being productive means doing the things that I want to achieve that matter most to me. And it's very important to be clear on what those are in the first place. So, you know, I, I always like to talk about priorities in, in three different areas, in my health, in my relationships, and then in my work or my fulfillment. And breaking it up that way for me helps me stay aligned in the areas that are true for me and that mean the most to me. So my health, it's my physical, mental, my relationships, it's my family, my friendships, and my romantic relationship. And then in my fulfillment, it's not only my work, so my career, but it's also my businesses, this podcast, hobbies I have. I've recently gotten into ceramics and pottery. So those are all things that fulfill me on the side. So getting clear on my priorities in each then helps me know what I'm measuring when it comes to productivity. Uh, I What you've kind of brought up and mentioned is an episode I did a week or two ago. 
And it was talking about the different ways we can look at measuring productivity. Because for a lot of people who are high achievers, um, top performers, we really like to have things like we tick things off a to-do list. It gives us a dopamine hit. It helps us kind of track what we're doing. But I spoke about it in that particular episode in or from the point of view that it can be quite a dangerous trap to fall in. Well, we're just using a to-do list to kind of measure our productivity. So for me, there are a few other key things that we can look at that I think are a real better marker of productivity or success. And the first one really comes down to energy management. So if you're somebody that can manage your energy, and when I say that, I mean, some people listening might know themselves to be more night people or some people are more morning people you know you meet people and they're like I I just can't get up early I don't know what it is like I just can't do it and other people are like like me after 5 6 p.m my brain just starts to switch off and wind down so people have productivity or energy peaks at different levels of the day and I think knowing that about yourself and then organizing your work or your day around that is a really great way to be productive because you can have a to-do list but if you're trying to do things when you're low in energy or you know you're 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 just not optimizing the way you're approaching things and it's a it's a harder way to get through that list so I think if you can manage your energy and that's a really good way to be productive um, another one I'll share is it's just an important thing to consider is the quality over the quantity so Again, you could sit and work for six, seven hours and, and, you know, on paper that looks like you've been very quote unquote productive, but what have you done in that time? Has it been of quality? Has it taken you seven hours to do something that really should have taken you two hours? So I like using something called uh, time blocking. Are you familiar with time blocking? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I'm pretty hyperactive um, as you are sharing all these key uh, points for productivity. So for people like me, I definitely need to be very aware of of how I am spending my days. And in terms of the energy, as you were commenting, how we manage our energy, definitely um, this is very intrinsic. I think it's important for us to to stop uh, even once a month to think about like, how is my energy? Do I have a dip on energy in a certain time of the day? And I think everything starts, to be honest, is on a sleep. I think it's so important for us to prioritize the, mm. sleep, um, the sleep time, uh, especially in this uh, part of the world that it changes so much. You can see how sometimes the sunrise is at five in the morning and then a few other seasons it starts at seven. So oh, I think the position of the sun, um, I'm not an astrologer or anything, but I truly believe that this planet, it has such an influence on on. The, the cosmos has a big influence into our energy. So if we like intuitively, we can actually follow the sun and, 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 and get the energy through the sun, right? So I feel like that's very important. Now, in terms of time blocking, there are so many techniques. I remember the Heisenhower matrix, which is great for prioritizing what's urgent and how, the importance of activities. And then the other one is the Pomodoro technique, which is like, well, you are Italian, so you know, <laughs> Pomodoro, it's like a tomato, right? Like we can remember those uh, grandpas, that uh, grandmas that cook and they have this um, um, timer, right? When we're cooking. So basically using the timer of the cooking timer and making 25 minutes or a little bit more focus into one activity. So tell me a little bit about the the time blocking that you use as a lawyer, as a host of uh, the balance theory, which guys follow the balance theory has amazing information for you, especially if you are um, a busy person or an entrepreneur. Tell us a little bit of time blocking there, Erica. So I think um, my style definitely aligns more with a Pomodoro, not because I'm Italian, just because (laughs) of the way I think (laughs) I have set it out. But I definitely like working in time blocks, you know, as as it literally speaks for itself. So what I will do is, and what I found, I always get the most out of my day when I do this. I have to admit I'm not 100% consistent, but is I like to work out, okay, what are my tasks for today? So start out with a simple to-do list. And then I start to block those in terms of priority. So I guess maybe it's a bit of a hybrid of the two. I will start putting them into my day and then I'll think about, okay, if this is the most important thing, then how long is it going to take me? And I'll make that block one. And then I'll think, okay, what's the next most important thing? How much time do I want for that? That becomes block two. 
Um, one thing I do like doing though is trying not to go back to back. So having spaces for breaks, even if they're little, five, 10 minutes. Another tip I have is if you're scheduling meetings, try and not do it on the 30 minutes or on the hour. Always try and let it finish five minutes before. Because then if you do get back-to-back -back meetings, at least you get that little rest in between. Because it's hard to digest the information, make you know next steps and just download what you've just learned. If you have to jump into another meeting, you want to reset your energy as well. So that's another thing I do. Um, and the third thing I would say, if I can, depending on how busy my day is, I like having when I need it, what's called no agenda time. So it's basically just a time block with no agenda, which means when I get to that time block, I can choose to do whatever I want. So let's say this, this happens to be on a weekend. This is a really nice block of time for me to not have to like pre-plan anything. So if I feel like being social, if I feel like going to the beach, if I feel like doing nothing, if I feel like going for a run, I can just decide in that moment what I feel like. Because so many times I have made plans two, three weeks in advance and I get to that weekend and then I just can't be bothered. Yeah. <laughs> so using that no agenda time and, and people could translate that and maybe go, okay, maybe I'm going to put five, 10 minutes in the middle of my lunch break or whatever. And they can utilize that you know, in that regard, or you can use it on the weekend for a little bit of self time, but that's like a, a nice way I've found to carve out some time for myself. And I know for a lot of people who are really busy, you know, you said there are a lot of mums listening, they're going to be strapped for time. Like the common thing I always hear is I don't have enough time, but everyone can find five, 10, 15 minutes to just carve out for themselves, set the intention that that's for you. Um, and, and it's, it's counterintuitive. If you think about it, sometimes with productivity, you think, oh, a time block to do nothing doesn't really feel like that's going to be productive, but the way it refuels you because you've just put a little bit of time into yourself is amazing for productivity. Mm -hmm. And in terms of that no agenda, do you mean you do no agenda time every day or you just uh, place it on the weekends? So me personally at the moment, I'm just, it's just on the weekends, okay. but I have experimented in the past I know some of the listeners have said they love the concept and they ended up integrating it on a daily basis. So for me, it's like, this is this concept that has worked for me and everyone can kind of take a piece of it and make it make sense for them. It could be once a week, whatever works for your timetable. Maybe for some people, it's first thing in the morning. Um, but but the idea is that it's not, it's not like I've got no agenda for an hour, I'm going to go to the gym. It's you actually don't plan anything. And when you get to that time, you see how you feel and do what you want in that moment. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of the listeners are dreaming with that not agenda to take a nap. <laughs> I'm sure you have <laughs> to just simply take a nap and do nothing. It's so good. The art of doing nothing is something that we definitely mm. practice more. I learn a lot. I travel and I love to see the cultures and witness what other people and how other people live. And I remember one time I was in Italy, actually, and I went to this. I've been in Italy so many times and I keep learning so much about the culture. I was in this place called Slow Cities. So actually, there, there is an organization that it promotes doing nothing. And the Slow Cities are basically promoting uh, the art of taking longer periods of break and pauses. So basically, a lunch, it's like a three-hour period. So literally the cities are locked. There is no restaurants. There is nowhere to eat. People are just in, at home. It really shuts like, down. For three hours. It's like when I was there on vacation, I was like, okay, where am I going to eat? Groceries are closed. Supermarket, everything's closed. Like, oh, okay. And I learned, right? And I started talking to the, to the locals and they were telling me that um, it gives them so much time for them to, to enjoy what really matters, you know? So it's so interesting how people... Um, change uh, the way us and, and then you can notice also places that are really rapid right like in new york like uh dubai for dubai. sure yeah for sure for sure so it's really interesting i think we can adopt always this type of techniques um now like let's just go into erica right because i talk to people in a very um human level right because we all have this kind of uh, a screen that we set in front of our eyes when we hear the achievements of people. And I know you are a very high achiever woman, but deep inside of you, I want to talk about like the Erica as a kid. I love to talk um, about the childhood stories. You can tell me a little bit about you when you were a, a child in um, beautiful Sydney. I imagine how much you enjoy the nature there. 
um, if you can remember yourself, like a time in, in Sydney and how you actually organize your day, you actually always had this uh, intu intuition about uh, organizing your days or were, was it a little bit hard for you at the beginning when you were uh, preparing all the activities and the extracurriculum activities? Like how was Erica when, let's say when you were 15 years old, how was, uh, you remember a time that, you know, do you remember any time? Share any story, please. Yeah, um, I think to be honest, I was always kind of wired in this way. Uh, my mum, you know, I think you can't separate your childhood or the way you were raised from your parents and who they are and what they taught you. And so a big part of what my mum taught me was to be very organised, um, to not leave things to the last minute. And that's just how I've always been. Like I've never been one of those people that does the assignment the night before. I like to give myself a lot of time because I don't like to stress out. So I've always been organized. Um, now that I think about it, actually, when I was in high, so 15 years old, I was in high school, we used to get timetables. So that was effectively time blocking done for us. Uh, but then I would actually kind of take the same principle and apply it on the weekends. But I remember, because I, and it's funny now that I have a podcast and I'm talking about balance, I I feel like I was that kind of kid that I really liked socializing. I liked going to parties. I liked going out, but I really cared about my academics and school. And so I used to use these like social events as motivation when I was studying. So if I did do, didn't do all my studies or finish my assignments on the Saturday, then I wouldn't go out that night. So I would actually use it as like reverse motivation uh, because I wanted to have both effectively. And I needed to find a way to make both fit into my time. So, yeah, I think to answer your question, I've always been, I've always loved like organization and admin. I remember being quite young. I, I went into, my dad was an accountant. So I used to go with him and he used to show me his office. And I used to love how he had all his stationery. And, you know, I had this pipe dream in my head of working in an office and what that would look like. Um, so I think I was always just like drawn to organization and, uh, approaching things with a little bit of a measured kind of approach, I guess. So, yeah, I think I think it's always been an interest area of mine. I don't think I've gone too far away from where I was as I was younger. Yes, well, thank you for sharing that part of of the story who you are, because sometimes we get shaped by by specific uh, role models right so if your mom always help you to 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 follow this organization especially if your dad is an accountant i'm sure he he, he was really organized um do you feel like nowadays uh, kids have the ability to to organize their days especially because back in the day we didn't have this the, the phone the iphones and all these distractions in our hands and it was already hard for us um, especially Kids that are not diagnosed with AD, ADD or hyperactivity or anything, right? Now they just so um, they just, just want they have so much in their head and they have so much pressure from all these um, assignments. Do you feel like nowadays the kids uh, have that ability to organize with the distractions coming in their in their way? Like, do you feel like uh, is this something that is going to be a big challenge in the next generation, or or do you have any? Um, insight about this? I think it's an interesting question. Um, I think on one side, there are a lot more tools available today. So yes, we have the phone and, and it's a source of great distraction, but there are also so many more tools on there that actually help with time blocking, with organizing your schedule. There's so much more access to information, you know, like podcasts and just people on YouTube talking and giving tips for free, things that we didn't have easy access to. But for people to search that, like kids to be interested and look for that, they obviously have to have some sort of interest in it. Um, I think with with tech present or not, you'll always have, I mean, I just, I'm one of four kids, so we've got quite mixed personalities between us. I think tech or no tech, you're always going to have kids that are more creative and last minute and, you know, rush. It's like my sister, she's very creative, but she's very last minute, like always handed in things late. That's just no matter what, it was always her. Whereas I was the kind of kid, I was a bit more organized, like taking my time with things. So I think there's an aspect of this that's personality driven. I think the second layer would be from the parents, right? So I think still that's an that's a relevant 
role model in today's society. I think that tech definitely makes it harder. I mean, I even look at myself. I think I used to be able to sit down and study for three, four hours without even turning my phone around. And now I get the urge, you know, you think, oh, I'm just going to check this. I'm, I'm just going to check my notifications. You, you get that urge to just quickly check. So I can see the transition and how much more difficult it is for me now from when I was younger. So I can only imagine these kids, it's all they've ever known. They don't know what it's like to not have that constant impulse. So I think direction from the parents and you know, I just look at the way my mom kind of raised me in terms of how to organize my time and like not be last minute with things and do my homework or whatever, just the little things she imparted on me. I think, I mean, I'm not a parent yet, but I, I'd say when I become a parent, it would also be my responsibility to, you know, guide them in a way where I can give them the tools or at least get them interested in things as well. But yeah, I think it's interesting because I think it's a personality thing too. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, no, I just thinking as I'm talking to you, because I feel like um, the message is for mothers, the message is for adults are listening to this podcast, but also like, what about the kids, right? That they are actually uh, are being, learning the behavior of the parents, right? So I feel like, like, let's say my mom is extremely punctual. Like I learned to be punctual because my mom is like, if the appointment is at eight, you got to be there 15 minutes before. Why? Because you never yeah. know if there's going to be traffic, an accident, something can happen in the way. So always have that three extra 15 minutes. Why? Because my mom always said that the time of people is so valuable that uh, if they are actually blocking the time to meet you, it's valuable. And that's just, it shows respect, you know? So mm -hmm. that's there from my mom. She's ex with a doctor's appointment. She was like right 15 minutes before always. And yeah, a couple of times we saw that it's things happening the way and we got right at the time that we're supposed to be. So I kind of got the, the idea why my mom said that to be punctual. Now as an adult, I continue being punctual the, as much as I can. And um, But I still feel, to be honest, because um, our society has changed so much. Like I'm almost 40. Next year I will be 40. Um, I don't believe uh, in my generation we had phones in my class. I don't believe in anybody has phones and we still were struggling with organization. Um, so I imagine now like kids by eight, they already have a phone and they most of the, the apps are related to social media, which is like entering the world of other people. So I just like very curious. I would love to hear from the listeners uh, if you have uh, strategies that you use at home for your kids to be able to help them to be productive because sometimes we are expecting so much from from our kids and then we think about uh how we actually providing the the guidance and the, the the path for them to be able to to achieve what we are expecting from them so that's just a question for you guys for the listeners erica and i we don't have kids but as women we're always thinking about uh the the generation that follow us because at the end i, I understand the balance theory for you is a legacy that it will continue forever with your voice and, and the stories that you're sharing with all your guests same like my my idea with this podcast is to perpetually uh share stories and and share the the, the solutions and, and tools that we have. So Erica, tell us a little bit about how we can find you. Uh, I know that the Balance Theory is on Spotify and most of the platforms on audio. Uh, tell us a little bit about how do you see yourself in 2024 and how can I help you to spread your message globally? Well, thank you so much. It really does mean a lot. Um, 2024. Uh... This year for me, I set the intention for it to be a growth year. So I'm putting myself in uncomfortable, out of my comfort zone positions. I'm trying new things. I'm it's it's an expansion year for me. So I think I spent the last two years, you know, moving to Dubai, getting settled here, not knowing if we we're gonna stay here or not. Now we're settled and it's really just about expansion so i'm i'm grateful that you know you're you're going to be a part of that expansion and i'm able to speak to you and in your community through this channel as well as you said the podcast is available on all streaming platforms we're on youtube as well um if you guys are on instagram you can look us up at the balance theory podcast and in the bio there's a link to everywhere that we live online uh, my personal instagram is in the bio of our podcast instagram as well so that's probably your best place to reach me. And I'm also very receptive in my DM. So yes, I'm always geez. down to have a chat. <laughs> I, I, 
I read all my DMs. I love connecting with people. That's why I started this podcast. It's it's a total passion project for me. So yeah, I'm, I'm, that's that's where you can find me online. Super, Erica. I know you are a lawyer uh, on Web3, which is very technological advanced, like, which is great that you are continuing uh, being in, in front of the, the, the changes and the transformation. You're also a community builder, because I believe that we both have this desire to connect to our sisters and our brothers of our community and, and showcase them. And also learn so much, right? We're like a little curious uh, monkey asking questions. Yeah. <laughs> we learn, yeah, we learn so much uh, from questions, you know. I, I feel like it's one of the best ways for us to also connect heart to heart with people. So I, I love to connect with women like you. Thank you so much, Erica, to chair over 30 minutes of your time. I will be sharing this with particular people. I usually send it to particular female leaders that they will take uh, this into their platforms and share it with as many people as they can. And if you like any of the strategies and tools I would share today, or if something brought you into an insight of your own story, I would love to hear your messages and your comments. And the same like Erica, I'm very approachable. You can always write to me and um, the Joarly Rivas Rojas is my full name. You can find me there, or you can just Simply check the YouTube channels and all the uh, channels of um, podcasts that I'm there for you since 2018. It's just, I think it's coming and so fast. Okay. When you enjoy life, life continues and it goes so fast. It flows. But thank you so much, Erica. Have a beautiful rest of the day and Ramadan Karim and have a, <laughs> a great evening. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and for having me. Thank you so much, everybody. And remember that together we are a stronger. We invite you to subscribe to this channel and share with your community. Please leave comments below. And if you like the episode, click the like button. Have a beautiful day.